Okay. So, now I'd like to show you what I've been doing. Alright. We're not doing this live, I sat down and got through this because it takes a while, so I'm just going to show you what we've been up to. Yes. We have all pieces of the artifact. Yes, now, here's an interesting thing. You can look at it and they're placed at various angles and distances. You can rotate them, but their orientation in terms of depth doesn't actually ever change. So, you're a little confused as to where you put things. Now, if you look in the bottom left, you can see the mental energy bar is trickling down. That is not the same as mental energy on the actual stats. That's a specific mental energy bar for this task. Right. If it reaches zero, then you're a little bit stuffed. Right. Because that just knocks about half your mental energy out. So, after about half an hour of messing around with this thing, I figured out how you're meant to do this. The black edges of these circuit boards yeah. indicate where they're meant to go. And when you put them in the right place, it actually locks it into place for you, which was something I didn't get, and I just assumed you had to figure it out yourself. So that locks together. You've got this T-shape now in the bottom, yeah. where that fits in. Oh, yeah. Now, as for these bits, the depth orientation is actually a clue. The more it's on top, the closer it's towards you, and um, the other pieces simply go in the background. So you lock all that into place, and this annoying bell starts tolling. All in all, if you sit down and work this one out, it's actually a fairly clever little puzzle. <laughs> I'm failing Damn spectacularly. Rotating. But even though the mental energy bars run out, it's yeah. something with two buttons. So, having saved the game, presumably, after that little endeavour, yeah. I decide to go and actually investigate what this thing is. An artifact? Well, presumably, from artifact assembly. Hmm. So, this thing loads up, and actually apparently works, found you're an engineer as well as a music video producer, <laughs> uses two. So I think, okay, I'm going to exit, because I don't want to risk this, it might be important. Yeah. And the exit button doesn't work for some reason, so I decide to investigate further. I've got nothing to lose. So, it's set to loading current location, and what you actually find out is this thing is actually a teleporter. You set the location with the orange button, and then twice you can teleport back to wherever you set that location. Now this is theoretically very useful, because you could always say, set it in the tower, and then once you're right at the other end of the map, bring yourself back with no hassle. Yeah. The only problem is it doesn't work. The game is thoroughly broken, and the teleporter doesn't work in the least. They decide to leave this broken feature in the game, so you spend maybe a couple of hours assembling the artifact for no reason. Ah. Seriously? Yep. There was, a there was no point to the artifact. There was no point to all those mini games we played. Okay. Anyway, after stocking up on copious amounts of canteen and burgers, because people keep recommending this to me, <laughs> I've probably got about five in there. Anyway, that should be enough. For this final section, you'll need like eight canteens and four video chips of love. Of love. I've also got a Heinz video chip in there because Heinz occasionally restores physical and mental as well. Oh wow, okay. Anyway, so, back in the maze, this is actually fairly interesting. You don't have to go through door two in order to get to the other side. If you run around for a while, you've got to jump off the side in order to get to these bits. The black tunnels are actually the interesting things, because they're actually a crossroads. Yeah? Yeah, it's another hidden crossroad. You get to the centre and turn the dark and you get various red tunnels, but you don't notice it. So, you might not be able to see it, but I'm occasionally turning around in the dark here and taking a look at where I'm going. So this appears to be a room of nothing, but if you step into the centre and turn, say, right, you are now on the other side of door two. Oh, wow. Ta-da! So you don't have to play that <laughs> stupid mini-game. Oh, good. I like having our actions use <laughs> figured out to be useless. Yeah, I've more or less proved that the past two parts we accomplished absolutely nothing. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? No. Okay. Yes, it is. Uh. It'll be fine. So, once you exit the TV of pain and flashing lights, you can enter this hard corridor again. Right. So, I figured I might as well videotape this place, because all footage is good footage. You've got to discipline yeah. yourself to record every room you walk into. After I get back to here, the only reason I'm showing this is because this room is actually a little different. The internal source has brain drain instead of the death thing. This room actually knocks you unconscious. Yeah. It drains your mental energy rather than your life force. Oh, wow. So, if you're not averse to passing out, you can actually use it. 
But I bought enough video chips and canteens with me for this yeah. trip, they'll be fine, so okay. Right, so this, the this is the room that caused trouble. Yeah, and the door is still locked. Inexplicably, despite it being an electronic door, a wooden one appears there. Ah, uh, yes. So, save the game and go ahead. Now, the Sonic Cemetery did absolutely nothing, so let's go to the Hell's Garage. Which does absolutely nothing. Oh, it's literally a Hell's Garage. Yes. I'm not sure whether to punch them or hug them. Yeah, that's how I feel by the end of this. Anyway, so I take some footage, and I'm not sure whether it's changing, but there you can see the little fireballs in the that's background. Cool. Yep, so <laughs> once it stops, you've got all the footage you need, you put it back. So we've used the Sonic Cemetery, and we've checked the Hell's Garage, and neither of them actually take us anywhere. So let's check LA Stage. Yep, by process of elimination, LA Stage is the only one we can use. So there's this ticket booth, and I'm fairly horrified as to what might come up from behind it, so I go around here and start the adventure game clicking on everything. Yeah. Oop. And I go to this lamp and click down it, and I get lucky. <laughs> okay. So that's the remote to the Hell's Garage. Oh, come on! Yeah, that's you need stupid. a ticket. Oh, this game is stupid. Okay, yes. alright, we can go and do stuff in Hell's Garage. Yep. So, to Hell's Garage we go. After getting the remote out. But yeah, the artifact is completely useless here. That's annoying. Was it meant to be useful? It was meant to be a useful teleportation device, but my guess is they never playtested this properly. Or they might have. Well, they might have playtested it, I'm not sure. Anyway, you use that, and somehow that opens the door and you just fly in there. You can see on the left, there is a key and a bell sitting on those shelves you need to get. I see. Along with a gas canister on the right. These okay. are the most important things in here. You did. Now, so despite being inside, you're filming the outside. Do not question it. So... Slightly perplex as to what I do here, because I start clicking on things and get no results. I accidentally click the gas can, and apparently you can take that. Ah! And you're at the devil's computer. Um, okay. So, it's a bit vain to have a screensaver of yourself. And oh, apparently, a mini game. Yes. And these are actually instructions to a degree. So I'm like, what the hell did I just witness? Yeah. Um, and just wave about aimlessly for a while. And then I realized this flame actually moves the eyeball. Gently. So I knock it off the edge. Now this minigame is actually quite clever. You see the flame cat is going down, and as the flame goes down, the amount that it propels the eyeball... <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> the amount it propels it actually goes down as well. So this game is a lot easier in the earlier stages, because you can put a lot more firepower into it before it starts doing that, where it looks like it's on target and then it just bounces off the invisible block. And then um, you set it on fire. Yeah, if you hold it there too long it just blows up. Now, there's two problems with this. The first one is it's still fairly frustrating and sometimes, well, it doesn't make sense when it comes on target. But the thing is, if you realise you failed, because once you get the fuel too low, it's really difficult to aim this. Yeah. You can't reset the minigame. You have to ah. do this every time. So, I've got ahead. I got really lucky on this one and managed to just fling them all really early. Lock it in! So, once you've done this, basically, that plugs in. And the door opens. I didn't see this in the garage. Oh. Yep. And ta-da, devil drive. I have two mouse pointers for some reason. Anyway. So, you go there, and no, no hardship yeah, no hardware chip available. And I forgot to bring video chips. Ah. Back to square one. You're kidding. And if you want to get back on me, you have to play the minigame every single time. Apparently you turn off the computer or reset it every time you do anything on here. <laughs> Alright, damn, so we don't... Yeah. That must have set you back a bit. So, later, and one less mouse pointer. I plug in the video chips, and this is more or less what happens. It just transfers stuff, basically. So you've just nicked all Satan's files. Of course. Because, you know... Because you're a hacker as well as a engineer, as well as a music producer. Whoa. Certainly. So after taking the key and the bell and things, I've nicked everything I need from here. Can we assume that Satan is the Metal Lord? 
No. No, let's. Oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> right, door's locked. Yep. So, the Sonic Cemetery. I think maybe the key could help me out here or something? Mm. I mean, maybe you use it on the gates and it opens an alternate Sonic Cemetery. But first get the footage because you need footage. Yeah. We kind of screwed up our first time. So you use this, but there's no lock. Yeah. So I'm thinking, well, churchyard maybe? Maybe you use a bell? Hmm. That would make sense. Yeah, but not after clicking on the graves really first. Creepy way. People in the comments have given me, like, every bit of information I need here. Yeah. Arise! Nosferatu. Who dares disturb my sorrow? A wild emo appears. So... Uh, is that emo Elvis? Yes, it is. Open. Awesome. Or... Uh, so can... I'm like, well, he's not really doing anything. I might as well just videotape him. And because of the low <laughs> resolution, it looks like he's playing the banjo. <laughs> presumably you have to attack him now. Nah. Oh. So, not a lot's happening, and I see these buttons at the bottom, I'm like, what do you do with these? Turns out... <laughs> ah! Okay. <laughs> gotcha. But, uh... More or less, these are like all the music video clips you get. We oh, that's just wrong. It's awesome, but it's wrong. Yeah. So you get these random, rather muscular zombies appearing to sing with him. There's three songs for this guy, so I play Hang Your Head. And then I get fairly concerned that I'm actually summoning something horrible. <laughs> and try and turn it off. And then I accidentally summon it again. And then I turn this off, because this is the worst song I've ever heard. Yeah. They can really dance. So I rebury him, and just go on my way. So you don't need to record each one, you just... Not really. Okay. Alright, we need a ticket. So I take some footage of here, and then, well, this happens. You want to see a show? A uh, wild stripper appears. <laughs> yes. That'll be three hundred sixty, pal. Now these people always have a neutral state for whenever they're happy or sad. If you indicate their emotion, she just waves her face back and forth. Yeah. You want to buy a ticket or not, babe? Don't call me babe. Don't give her your bank card. Never so I exit, thinking, no way. So everyone was telling me to bring a burger with me, so I was like, okay, do I give it to her? I mean, <laughs> I've had no option so far to give anyone a burger, apart from the guitar warrior, and I doubt he'd appreciate that. Yeah. But there's nobody here. Okay. So I'm like, you know what, screw it, I have money, I'm just going to pay for this. <laughs> Roxanne. Oh, yeah. I see what they did there. Oh, okay, here is my bank card. So she just stares blankly while I pretend to go to my wallet and accidentally eat the sandwich I wanted to give her. <laughs> Good thing you bought like five. Yeah. Wow, you did make a lot of chips. Yep. Alright, there we go. So, you give her that, and she goes back to creepy happy mode. You just stick it down the hall, hop up on the chair, and enjoy the show. Her face genuinely does terrify me, so oh I just God. leg it yeah, and run. Thank you. Goodbye. She's a creepy person. Okay. You so, I'm like, yeah. So, let's go see the show. Did we just fall down an elevator shaft? Yeah. <laughs> what? We did fall down an <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, okay. And so, uh, so then that I real happened. So I realized I hadn't saved and had to do it all over again. Oh wow. So back to the Hell's Garage. 